Hey, chimps and champs. Rusty Miner coming at you with another knife review. This is the third and final video on the Wii Mini Buster. So, I did an unboxing on this video. I actually did two part twos. One is public, one's private, but you should be able to find the description in there. Uh, so today I want to talk about the innovation that's in this knife. Uh, with that, we're going to be talking about the stop pin. We're going to be talking about the backspacer. We're going to be talking about the detent on here. And even this uh, the pivot in there. Those are just some of the things. So let's get down to it. Okay, first up, <clears throat> the stop pin. So what I want you to notice on the stop pin is the size that we're looking at here. Okay, and I'm going to bring in some knives from some different price levels here. Today, we have an Effingrau. You guys notice any size difference in those two stop pins? And this is a big knife. Okay, when we compare the two, that's what we're looking at. It's actually a bigger knife. So this stop pin is designed... Because this knife was designed to be a chopper to coconut, to chop coconuts. So, to be fair, we'll, up, we'll step up to a $40 knife. $50. $50 knife. There's your QB. Okay, so one thing, it's just a bigger stop pin. Okay, and again, it's a bigger knife. We got a bigger stop pin here. Uh, I do like to show off the Tucson. This one also has. Now this one's actually pretty impressive. That stop pin. Yeah, it's bigger. Uh, not as big. But by golly, that's not a bad size for this knife. So, now this is about a $75 knife. So, titanium and 14C28N. So, moving on though. <clears throat> that was one of the things I wanted to show to you guys. Uh, another one that I was going to show you guys. Uh, what he did with the pivot was he did uh, free spinning. And he did that. So when this blade is moving, the pivot can spin, and it won't unscrew your pivot. Okay. One more thing we're going to move on to next, and that is the detent. So there's your detent right there. This is called the H. This is a hybrid pin detent system. What we're actually looking at... Let's see if I can get that in this light here. Hold on, I'll be back with stuff. Okay, guys. Trying to get the light on it. But if you can see in here, that's the detent pin. So we're going to open this up. Try to get you a look. in here okay so what we actually have here is a pin that goes all the way through the titanium and now what that's going to do is when you unlock this knife it's already past the detent on the close and when you Go to open this knife, you have to overcome that pin. And the pin is behind, behind the blade tang. Not actually, there's no hole drilled in there. It's actually behind the blade tang. You can see your multi-row bearings in there if we're looking at that. So what we got here then 
is as soon as it locks up, as soon as it gets past the, uh, as soon as it locks up, gets past the detent, it's locked up. So that's a unique feature that Snex worked on, and I'm seeing that in the Riat knives, some other higher end knives. Uh, let's go to some of the last features here. So, we already talked about some of the milling on this knife, and we talked about the blade swedge, what it's looking like. What I want to look at and show you now, excuse me, we'll let my dog out. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So what I wanted to show you is because of the size of the stop pin, and just some other things about this, the way this knife was put together, and the way the blade height that he wanted, when you go to close it, the edge was longer than the handle. So, you know, we all have that sometimes where we feel like we could maybe touch the edge when our knives are closed. You know, and that's something you got to look out for how that's open. So, what did uh, Snex do? He built this backspacer. Now, if we take a look at this backspacer, you guys can see is grooved all the way down the middle to accommodate that. Now, that led to some trouble because he wanted to put some, some stop pins in here, some body pins. And uh, he solved that by putting in locator pins. So this backspacer is all one piece and just has this one uh, screw holding it in, which is pretty cool. I want to take and show you guys to take a look at the design down there. You can actually see the groove because of the bronzing. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if we can see any of the internal milling in here but again you guys can should be able to see that groove and it runs all the way up so it runs all the way to this this point on this knife here uh, when this is closed you guys are looking at that's what we're looking at there so well, guys, I think I covered just about everything on the Snex knives. <clears throat> I want to tell you guys to give a take a look and see if you can find, follow him. Snex started designing knives in 2015 with something known as the, um, I think it's called the Vision Knife. And he also then, you guys should check out some, the IFS20. I'll put the numbers on the screen. Uh, the Buster Knife. With uh, each knife, he made like um, 18 Buster Knives. I want to say they sold for eight to $10,000 a piece. Same materials as we're looking at here. And he made 36 of these. And again, they sold for thousands of dollars. What this is, he teamed with We Knife Company. This is the same specs as what he made 36 of them. But rather than being directly from Snex and directly from his lab, uh, came from we. And uh, that's why this is my grail knife. Thanks for watching all the way through, guys. Appreciate you. Gee whiz, I'm going to have to start making some notes. I forgot to mention one more thing on this knife. And that is the coating. So I reached out to, well, I did a lot of research. I, I read some magazine articles. I um, bought this knife off of Blade HQ, and the blade finish is advertised as black stone wash. Uh, I read in Blade magazine that this was a DLC coating. So I actually reached out to We and asked them. I, e I emailed them. And they did get back to me and said this is black DLC. Now, if you guys don't know what DLC is, that's okay. It's been around a couple years, maybe maybe more, and it's new to me. Uh, DLC stands for Diamond Light Carbon. 
So they coat this blade with carbon that's hard like a diamond. So we are looking at a coating that can have hardnesses of over 70 HRC. So with that kind of thing, what happens is a lot of times, I watch some videos, um, when you get a scratch on your blade, they say wipe it off, it's probably remnants of whatever you were cutting through. It's not a scratch. So this thing has really got a superior coating on it and I just wanted to talk about that because I didn't realize it when I bought this knife and I feel kind of lucky about that so DLC is also under a category of PBD it's like a particle vapor distillate I want to say uh, where they you know atomize and turn everything into vapor and then they put uh, and like electrically charge your blade so it, it bonds uh, kind of uh, chemically becomes part of the blade. The way I think of it is like fluoride on your teeth. When you went into the dentist, they put soaked your teeth in a fluoride treatment. So, hey, over here we got my 227. So, don't have it out much. But if you guys are still watching, a couple of my favorite knives right there. Maybe I'll do another video on the 224, the Viper. Thanks, guys. Bye.